All right, that's a little better. All right, sounds good to hear you. Okay. Yep, I can. So this gotcha. is, is this, I'm sorry, was this um, Metropolitan State University? Uh, yes, I'm a student at uh, MSU. Um, I'm majoring actually in uh, global business studies, and uh, part of that curriculum is um, I'm taking a class called global business studies, or I'm sorry, called um, cross-cultural communications. Oh, okay. And um, it's basically an uh, anthropology class. Um, the final project here was um, we picked a culture, and then we want to uh, investigate it and kind of just see, you know, explain the culture. You know, just do some ethnographic research and some anthropology within there. All right. Um, cool. Part of that was just, you know, interviews. Um, various cultures so i decided i want to do a flat earth and uh, sure and, why you know, go why not <laughs> gosh yeah just um it's just you know, um you know interesting phenomena um going on here yeah um regardless of you know whatever physics and explanation and just um kind of just you know the, the cultural aspects kind of what i'm i'm looking to focus on like kind of sure more of it's just um it's a sense of community and like um you know there until yeah you know, let's start with that it's like um kind of culturally speaking you know regardless of any of the you know um physics and and, and explanations and all, all that within the science and stuff um what about flat earth uh, community do you think is uh, maybe overlooked a little bit or not understood huh um most but the that's actually a good question i don't think i've ever gotten it like that uh what in the flat earth community has been overlooked in my opinion that has nothing really to do with the um the science if if that's what i'm getting at from you uh the nuts and bolts uh probably would be the uh, the sense the the overarching sense of cohesion in, in flat earth and i talked about this in the documentary and i don't know if you've never seen it uh, i mean if you're a young student you probably haven't because it was out a few years back there was a netflix documentary uh called behind the curve which which focused on us and in it i was talking about how inside the flat earth community we have a lot of different factions much like the scottish highlands if you're a, a history fan at all you know, the, the, the Scottish Highlands would hack each other up all the time. But at the end of the day, they had a common enemy, which was the English army, you know, the British army on the other side of the field. And that's when they banded together and, and, and they were quite a considerable force when they were unified. And that's what we are. The thing that gets overlooked a lot is that, yes, there's all sorts of different content creators. And no, we don't get along. Um all the time you know we we in fact if you asked anybody in our community it's like hey what's your top 10 reasons that you believe you know that the world is flat or your or even your top 10 conspiracies you get all these different answers but at the end of the day we all agree that it's not a globe that you're living in some sort of um, building some sort of structure whatever it's made out of and that's what's overlooked the most and so we're we're underestimated most of the time and the other thing that we're underestimated with, and again, not getting into the nuts and bolts, is that um, uh, we most of our community is still in the closet, meaning because of friends and family and coworkers, most of the people that are out there uh, can't even can't even talk about flat Earth because they're afraid of being that guy or that person that. Uh, uh, that they get that's going to get and in fact the, the the co-worker is probably strongest you know yeah friends and family you know everyone can deal with that but do you really want to keep showing up at wherever work place you go to and be have that label put on you and you and you can't peel it off um if you want to get, get a chance I, I know your projects do really really soon but look up a fox uh, article that came out just a couple days ago uh, on Fox News, where uh, they were talking, they were talking to Travis and whatever the other guy, the Kelsey brothers, right? And they were, and they were asking about how many guys in the NFL are in flat Earth, and they said, "Oh yeah, like at least twenty percent of the NFL is into flat Earth, but they're not going to talk oh, yeah, about so. the what." Oh yeah, I was just saying. I think I saw that too. Yeah, yeah, they, but they can't talk about it because they're afraid of you know you do you want to be that guy in the locker room. That, that gets that label put on you it's it's tough i've talked to many i've gotten so many emails i've been doing this for nine years and still most of the people i know friends of mine some family some people that i used to go to school with back in the day it's like oh yeah i'm totally into it can't talk about it 
but I'm totally into it. So, you know, that's why I keep pushing the way I do. Eventually, you know, how peer pressure works, you know, once the majority is reached and that scale tips the other way, then it, things move pretty fast. So there you go. Long winded answer. Awesome. No, that's perfect. Um, so kind of within there, you mentioned too, um, like the, the social implications that kind of come with, uh, with believing in flat earth. Is, can you maybe elaborate on that? Like, like do you have any examples of like uh, social status or, you know, things that have negatively impacted your, your life socially? Um, so yeah, social aspects that, that negatively uh, influence what I've done. Well, I'm a little more, um, I wouldn't, wouldn't say immune, but resistant to it than most. Meaning uh, most of, you know, I, I never got married or had kids and I'm in my 50s now. So the peer pressure thing really doesn't affect me. I'm Gen X. Gen X really doesn't care that much about peer pressure anymore. I mean, we went through it back in, back in the day, back in the 80s and early 90s. Um, but for, I have run into people where marriages have split, uh, you know, badly because it is such a paradigm change. You know, when you're saying you don't believe in the globe solar system model anymore, you believe in the snow globe model, you know, that you're living basically in a, in a soundstage, you might as well, it would be easier to change religions, right? You know, if there's five major religious houses in the world, right? Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. And you, you're going to flip, you know, both of you are Islam and one of you is going to go, um, Judaism or, or Christian Christianity or something like that. It would that would be easier than trying to be a flat earther, a new flat earther, and living with we'll just call him a globalist for for, for lack of a better term, uh, because it's just a massive massive paradigm change. Uh, change and again you you're you then become that guy. You're not just a conspiracy person at that point. You're the top of the freaking conspiracy food chain. And people look at you, it, it would be, I mean, it's it's akin to believing, you know, not only in Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster, but aliens and all these other things combined. All those things sit below flat earth in the the, the, the um, crazy scale that the, the, the gets slapped on us from, from media. So does that kind of help? Yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate your time. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, you can ask anything you want. I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you yeah. all the time you need for this. Gotcha. Awesome. Um, so I'm sorry. I had a list of things here. It's all right. Take your time. Yeah, I'm so sorry. This is a very yeah. impromptu here. No, no, so. no, no. I mean, if you if this thing is due, if this thing is due in less than 24 hours, uh, I've, I've got to give you everything I can. So right, right. Uh, thank you. I, uh, the um, well, here I'll, I'll give you I'll give you one since well while you're looking for this, um, how about this? The uh, people often ask me from the from the student standpoint if we're ever going to see eye to eye with mainstream science, and you know if, if, if anyone's making efforts to bridge those gaps between us and the and this mainstream scientific community and the truth is is that we're more than willing to talk to them but when you reach a certain academic level you know usually um if you if you have a master's degree in any sort of physical science or higher you know forget about phds then you're you're so far gone there's so much conditioning on that side you know you've absorbed you've spent so much time in the textbooks and so much money because you, you, you know academics. When you reach a certain level, the only thing you care about is being peer-reviewed and being published. And by that, you know, published papers. And the, the scariest word for any academic is ostracized because you don't want to lose your, your peer groups. You know, that's, you've spent all this time. So when you hear about Flat Earth, it's an, it's an outrage. It's an insult. It's a slap in the face. And there's no way you could take a stance with us. Uh, because you can't, it's, it's, you know, if you did everything you've worked for up until that point becomes irrelevant to, to, a, to a lesser degree. I mean, astronomy and if anybody in ast astronomy and astrophysics, I think, what do you do? There's, there's nothing you can do. So that could, I, I like throwing that out every once in a while. I've done, a, I've done a number of student things over the years. So I kind of anticipate a few of the questions, but what else you got? Um, so... What do I got, actually? 
Think, it, you, wing it. Wing it. It's just from a personal standpoint. Uh, any Anything that you you could think of in your class that it might be. You're, the teacher will, by the way, be intrigued by the fact that you're even broaching this topic. They, uh, I'm certain. Um, so what do you think... Um, so, so I feel like the perception of flyers is typically like uninformed, um, has kind of this weird pseudo scientific perspective on, on things like that. Yeah. What do you think is like misinterpreted from there? Like, what do you think is like kind of wrong with that worldview? Oh, the, what, like for them, we're like a, the the biggest problem there, idea. and there's there's a number of quotes on this, and and I can't remember who came up with the original one, which is uh, condemnation without investigation is the the height of ignorance which is we get nailed. For, you know what? I'll give you a great, great one. Um, you're old enough to at least sort of know who George Orwell is, you know, the guy that wrote 1984. And he, when back in the day, back in the, the mid-40s, 1946, I believe, he came up with a quote and he was talking about, he wasn't a flat earther, but he was talking about how people just believe whatever science puts forward to them. Uh, to steal a line from the Truman Show, we believe the world that is presented to us, especially if we think those people are more intelligent than ourselves. And so he said, you know, it's weird. You could walk out in the street right now and ask anyone how they know the world's a globe. And the first thing, they'll just, it'll be a knee-jerk reaction. It'll be, what are you talking about? We know. It's a known thing. It's like a given in algebra, right? And then you, you push them on it a little bit. You say, really? How do you know? Right? And then their wheels start spinning. Because then the average person realizes it's not that you know. You, you don't have a, own a rocket ship. You don't, you're not part of a space program. You were told. And your father was told and his father before him and so on and so on and so on. So, when, in fact, I'll, I'll throw one more out at you, which is when I go to other countries and I ask them, you know, I say, hey, people of random country in Europe, the Americans went to the moon, right? We, have, we of course, being in America, we have to believe that. It's just part of our thing. That's what we do. Why do you think the Americans went to the moon? And they all say the same thing. They say, well, it was, it was on your news. And your news would never lie about anything like that. Right? It's too big. And it's like, really? Because, you know, you, you think our news isn't biased in any way, shape, or form. And you don't think that there are corporate interests and there are governments above those. And you spin the stories. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book. You control the media. So the thing, the, the message, the... Circling back, the thing I'm trying to get at is, is that we get condemned. I'll, I'll give you, you know what, I'll, I'll, let me rattle one more thing off at you. You'll get this, which is uh, there's something we've been throwing at people over the last couple of years. It's like it just average, average person. You don't have to answer this, right? I'm just going to throw a series of questions, which is, you know, how fast is the earth spinning at, at its equator, supposedly? How fast is it? traveling around the sun how fast is our solar system moving sideways through the galaxy and how fast is that galaxy milky way traveling through the rest of the universe i know all those things i had to relearn them when i was doing flat earth what's interesting is i can ask an average audience of globalists those things almost none of them will know the answers to them and yet they're still defending that model and so i'll come back and i was like why are you defending a model where you don't even know the details of it you just know the very, very broad strokes. And by that, I mean the average person on the street doesn't, can't even name the nine planets, right? So that's, that's the big thing that we have to throw out there all the time. And that is we get attacked by people. The only reason they're attacking us is because they saw a globe that was put in their classroom in first grade. And it stayed in the corner of the classroom. Every classroom's got one for whatever reason. And it sits there in the corner of the classroom until you graduate from high school. That's bare minimum. That's 12 years of conditioning. It's usually right below the American flag. And, you know, and the American flag sitting there, that's for a reason. You know, there's people that join the military partly because they've seen the American flag so many times. And then, you know, when it comes to the globe, oh, yeah, I'm willing to defend that. You know, the idea of the globe. Why? Because it's been sitting in my classroom. I have no reason. It's, it is tr straight up traditional conditioning. So, yeah, there, there you go. We, we get attacked. We get attacked just be, from hearing the words it's the only conspiracy by the way we debunk to children it's when you're in first grade you probably don't remember it back in the day um which is oh yeah we used to think the 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 world was flat but now it's a globe and they, the teacher spins it from you and they put it in the corner of the classroom it's never brought it up again that's it they never talk about any other conspiracies except for that one pretty interesting anyway there you go
So you you mentioned um, earlier the um, like the faction type of concept of like Scottish Highlands, like there's multiple factions within the Flyleth community. Yeah. Um, what are the factions? Like, how do you you know how do they differentiate? The the big faction, the 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 big two factions are um, whether we, there's a dome, you know, whether we're living in a a domed snow globey typey thing, or it's just a flat plain with no dome. That, that's the, the two big factions. And by that, I mean 70% of people believe, at least, and I'm not going to give you super detailed numbers, but at least 70% believe that it's a dome and the other 30% don't. And the 30% that don't are generally the type that, you know, don't like being fenced in, you know, don't fence, you know, don't, don't, they don't like to be confined, uh, even though without the dome, you still have to run into the issue of gravity versus the vacuum of space. And they know there's a problem there. And so, you know, it's just generally not talked about too much. Um, other people talk about what the dome might be made of. Uh, they argue about whether it's, you know, whether um, the reality we're living in is, is digital, you know, whether it's virtual or not. Uh, you know, how, how thick is it? Are there other, and of course, the endless discussions about what's outside of it. You know, the, the endless speculation. Are there other domes? Are there other snow globes? Are there other continents? Are we living in a series of, of um, enclosed structures? And so on and so on. So between all those factions, oh yeah, there's all sorts of discussions. However, when you go to the conferences, all these same factions come together. Because at the end, it's like, oh yeah, it's, you know, I'd, I'd rather have a uh, uh, an active, uh, very somewhat, even somewhat agitated army than a bored one. When you're bored, you, 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 know, you know your motivation just goes through the floor. But we we're, we're never bored. We're constantly looking, constantly searching everywhere we can for uh, even little nuggets of answers. And since we've been doing this you know, for nine years, we've come up with a lot of great stuff. So yeah, the faction the factions are out there. But again, in the end, we're all unified towards the same goal. Right. Yeah, it's pretty um, I don't want to say unique, but uh, you know, just in our culture in general. You know what I mean? Like even. Right and left wing are still like fractured within each other, and it seems to be difficult for even people on the same party sometimes to like agree on you know certain things as far as you know politically legislation or even just like culturally. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool how like even just you know small perceptions of things you all can kind of agree like something's going on. You know, yeah, and, and it, it wouldn't it wouldn't you wouldn't even be talking to me if we didn't have some sort of common common threads that that we could be on um, because we would we would have fractured and never come come together and we did conferences we, we were thinking about conferences the very first year and we did conferences all the way up until the mandate started and then we were well the while well, the rest of the country wasn't doing <clears throat> excuse me um conferences at all we were we were still um one of my one of my co-hosts for a podcast um uh, karen b out in the east coast in the carolinas she was doing conferences when nobody else was doing conferences which was which was awesome we were doing stuff when the rest of the world was shut down you know during the the whole pandemic thing because we didn't care most of by the way there is a common thread there which is almost i would say at least 90 percent of our group didn't buy into the mandates at all we you know again conspiracy people it's like nope we're we're gonna roll the dice on everything's manufactured and you can't trust anything in the media so therefore why would we trust that and it worked out Right. Um, yeah, I guess within that too. Um, I was gonna ask. So you mentioned. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm like trying to record and do. That's it. all right. I'm 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 recording on this side anyway. So I'll I'll send you if you remember after this is over. I'll email you the audio file of this. Awesome. Yeah, I was uh, I was recording here too. I was actually gonna ask too. I have um, a consent form here. Um, I don't know if you want to say it's just um, uh, do, if I do use, it, like your name. Dude, we'll we'll just do an audio consent. I consent. To, you can use. In fact, I even oh. put I even put that in the description box of every single video I make, which is you can use my stuff for anything you want. I give up the rights to it. Have fun with it. Um, what other questions might you have on the culture of flat Earth? Do we do we like, sacri- uh, do we sacrifice people? Yes. Routinely, <laughs> no. Routinely, yeah. For the culture, for yeah. The yeah, for the greater um, good. Right. Well, no, it's just um. So like this whole the whole project and this whole um whole class is is, is like I said, it's cultural communication. So it's more I'm kind of trying to like bridge the gap between like flat Earth and like 
I don't want to, I don't know how the rest of us the the round earthers oh well yeah the the, well, the rest yeah the globalists the what you know is again it's in the documentary they people have tried oh I'm sorry that's what I was going to get at I'm sorry I completely missed the that part, the last part of the story I was telling earlier which is the problem is is then once once academics reach a certain level they were reaching up right to them and saying, you know, all of branch in hand saying, hey, you want to talk to us about this? And they're saying, no, flat earth is beneath us in every aspect you can think of. Therefore, we're not going to talk to you. And I've even warned people in, in the simplest of, of terms. I said, look, if you don't come up with an easier way to explain the solar system model, you're going to lose by attrition. And by that, I mean the average... And, and you'll get this, which is in high school, look, band and football and basketball and baseball and, and ASB club and, and whatever clubs there are nowadays, they're all pretty big. Math club and physics club, pretty damn small. And they've always been small, right? That, that group, I mean, God, there's a, there can only one, be one valedictorian, one salutatorian, and then, of course, the also-rans. So those people... When we try to reach out to them, they say, no, it's, it's, that is, flat earth is not even worth our time. It's an insult to even bring it up as a, as a topic. We don't even want to give it a platform. That's like, all right, you don't understand how the, how the world works. The, the average person, Joe Lunchbox on the street, we came up with an easier way to explain the, the universe than mainstream science. And you're saying, well, just because it's easier doesn't mean it's true. It's like, well, no, but it is easier. And as one of my uh, friends that's in, uh, in the Flat Earth community came up with a great quote, he goes, you want to know how to, how to become rich? Find a way to make people lazier. And that's usually what works. I mean, look at, look at I'm old enough to remember when uh, like um, texting took over from voice calls, where even though physically it's harder to do, right? And, it, and there's huge amounts of, of things that are lost in translation where we had to come up with all these emojis just to fill in the gaps. Emotionally, it was easier. And because of that, people just grab, you know, now Gen Z, including you, you know, it, texting, you live and die on texting, even though you shouldn't. I mean, there's, there's so much that's lost in translation. Anyway, Oops. sorry, that was my, me going off into the weeds. Okay, guys. Thank you. Okay. Um... Cool. So what, um, I guess, uh, just on the topic of, you know, the, the subject of the class and everything, like, what do you think the media generally gets wrong about, like, flat earth? Not, again, like, not necessarily, like, the physics, the explanation, the math, and everything behind what, what your beliefs are, but just more, like, the culture. What do you think is, like, a weird perception that people have, or, like, what's something that's um, the, not portrayed? The, the most, well, again, it's a knee-jerk reaction. What the media gets wrong most, most often is they immediately jump to, well, flat earthers are obviously crazy. Uh, because flat Earth used to be quite quite an insult back in the day. You know, before 2015, uh, you, you know, you could call people flat Earthers, and it, that was that was a, quite a dig on them. But nowadays, not so much. I mean, we've been we've been hammering on people. Mainstream media has done all sorts of pieces on us. Just about every major YouTube channel you can think of has done a flat Earth video at one point or another. Now they come out against us, but as the old saying goes, um, even even uh, bad publicity is free and it generates metrics, especially nowadays. So if a giant channel with, you know, 10 million subs decides to do a flat earth video, hey, great. I'd lo love to see more of them because out of those people they're exposing to it to, you're, we're going to pick up some of them because there are people will be like, hey, that's really interesting. I'm going to do my own research, which is why we push all the time, uh, which is also another thing that mainstream media gets wrong, which is they don't even want to address it. It's a high gloss, 50,000 foot view of flat earth, which is flat earth is obviously crazy. NASA is proven to be right, even though no one's gone to the moon since 1972 and so on and so on. And, you know, they just lay out all these facts. It's like flat earth is crazy because of this end of story, you know, full stop. And all we say is like, okay, you think it's that crazy? Do your own research. Don't listen to mainstream media and figure out where it leads you. And everybody does the same, same thing. They lean on NASA. NASA is, has not aged well at all. You know, remember, they were created in 1959. And they have not aged well since then at all. Then the Apollo missions have aged horribly. And so after that, then people kind of pick up things on their own. But yeah, mainstream, they, they tend to follow each other. They tend to all follow the same. I mean, there's a reason why like newscasters sound like each other, right? They all have that news speak 
Um, same sort of formats. Uh, the producers generally follow the, all the same formulas, and we try to break out of them whenever we can, and it's worked pretty well. Is there um is there any so um how big of an overlap is there between like flat earth and other conspiracy theories? I understand you mentioned uh, a couple other things earlier, but like uh, hu huge like huge overlap. Well, I well remember flat earth is the big umbrella. So everything, if you believe in flat earth, then every other conspiracy fits inside of flat earth with the exception of like, you know, a secret moon base or secret Mars programs and crap like that. Anything that leaves the earth. No, the, we, nobody believes in that. Um, and we, we've had a great track record for that. It's like people talk about Mars. Nobody goes. People talk about the moon. N nobody sends anything of, of worth a damn with any footage. Um, but as far as the other conspiracies, yeah, yeah, there's lots of, <laughs> it's also the drawback of flat earth, which is once you're into flat earth, you are open to a lot of stuff, a lot of different conspiracies. And that's when, again, the factions start kicking in, which is, all right, do you believe in Bigfoot? Do you believe in Loch Ness Monster? Do you believe in ancient civilizations? Did you all, yeah, how, how many seasons of ancient aliens did you watch? Uh, do you believe in Atlantis, you know, ghosts, so on and so on and so on. Uh, and that's when the disagreements start. But again, because flat earth is bigger when you get up to the, the highest level, then it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I don't care about a lot of those because they're just small by comparison. They're, they're tiny. You know, we, we caught flack and, uh, you know, I'll be careful because I know there's some certain things you probably can't say in your, in your paper, but like, um, 9-11 for example, was considered to be one of the, the greatest conspiracies that really was out there, even though I thought technically the moon mission, you know, fakery was was bigger. But but again, 9-11 was just one city in one country. That's nothing compared to, you know, the whole flat earth concept, which is that you're living inside a soundstage. I mean, that's that's, you know, orders of magnitude bigger than 9-11. So but yeah. Everyone, everyone that's into flat Earth is definitely got no, no. I have never met a person that's been into flat Earth that isn't into at least half a dozen other conspiracies, and I don't generally bring them up when I'm talking to people. I'll, I'll let them offer it up, and it's like, yeah, some I like, some I don't. You know, do I do I think that JFK was a lone gunman who was then killed by a lone gunman? No, probably not. Do I think that that Bigfoot is, um, or that Elvis is alive and, and he's dating Bigfoot right now? Pro probably not. But uh, spaceships flying around? Yeah. I mean, I've taken night vision out myself. You can watch them any day you want with night vision and a clear sky. Any day you want. But the average person, they don't talk about it. Even though there's YouTube channels that even show some of this stuff. It's pretty spectacular. So, what's your favorite, like, go-to explanation when like someone comes up to you says the world is spherical you're wrong x y what what is your like go to like well simple experiment do it you can you can tell um the easiest one the one that gets most people and i mean at least three quarters of them at least uh of anyone in the community is not it's not one that i came up with in fact we don't even know who came up it, people just came up with it on their own in mass which is long distance photography which is which makes sense because 30 years ago our technology wasn't there when it came to cameras you know once once you could put in a, a you know really nice digital zoom into a camera you could buy for 500 bucks that's when everything changed because all of a sudden people started going down to the beach and shooting off into the distance things that and it's like what are you shooting at and it's like oh lighthouses boats that landmass, that sunset. It's like, really, why? Well, because the curvature of the Earth is, you know, measurable, right? It's eight inches per mile squared. But we don't see it. We're only told about it. And that's where, and water lay, lays perfectly flat, so everybody shoots over water. And it's amazing. It's like, oh, wow, I didn't even think of that. And and people were, were just running to the any any body of water and, and all of a sudden started creating content. And that's what got most people into it um for me it wasn't but my go-to for for the academic that's out there because you're you know you're writing an academic paper and you know your your teacher probably i don't know if they've got their masters or their, well they got at least their masters maybe a phd which is my my favorite go-to is gravity versus the vacuum of space 
that's the one that I think is, but most people don't understand it because you can't see a vacuum, right? A room that's made into a vacuum looks visually to us identical to a room that's got oxygen and nitrogen in it. And so the, the question there is, and I'll throw it at you really fast. So if you put a vacuum chamber in the, the, the room above you, right? And then you have a valve and you pull that valve. What happens? Well, it's not like the movies. It's instant. It's violent. The air equalizes in a fraction of a second. You may even die, right? It's that, it's that fast. You know, it's pressure. It's, a, it's one of the first law of thermodynamics, which is um, pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier, notably a hard barrier. Well, what happens with our atmosphere is next to the, the, the vacuum of space? How does our atmosphere stay there? And you say, well, it's got to be gravity. It's the only answer there is. It's got to be gravity. If it wasn't for gravity, we'd be dead. I go, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room from rushing upstairs to that vacuum chamber? The exact same gravity. And then people just start grinding gears. They don't know what to do. So I, and I've, I've asked, I've asked full-blown physicists. I've said, what happens when our atmosphere meets space? What happens? Tell me exactly what happens at the edge of, of space. No one can tell me. They just they just sit there. They freeze up, and I it's like okay, there you go. So you can explain that. I can I can knock people over all day long with it. So that's that's my big one. That's my that's my go to. But I I don't get to use it that much because most people that they get in uh, it's what they can see, which is okay. Long distance photography. It's like all right, fine. That's good. I mean, I don't think it's as solid as as vacuum versus gravity, but. It works. I mean, you ask anybody in the conference, they'll, I mean, there's people that, I mean, we, there's so many people that bought high-end cameras in our community because, because of uh, that. So there you go. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess when, when did, um, what was like the life altering that, that kind of turned you towards this community and like, what, what, what do you think? Um, that to it was, it was a, just a weird, again, it's in the documentary, but I'll rattle it off to you. It was just a weird moment where I had looked at just about every conspiracy there was, and I had an opinion on it, as I mentioned earlier. And then I looked at this one. I was going to ah, it's a piece of crap. I should be able to knock it out in a weekend. And I hate unresolved nagging issues like that. So I hammered on this thing and a weekend turned into a month which turned into nine months and then after those nine months i i gave up and i said okay for whatever reason i can I, if i wanted to prove the court in a globe uh, wow if i wanted to prove the globe in a court of law i can't do it i couldn't do it and so i that's when i started making content and i put the inner i you know put all my, my information out there doxed myself immediately and said okay internet hive mind Tell me where I screwed up. Tell me how I messed this thing up because I'm I'm going flat now. And somebody somebody bring me back to the club. And no one could. In fact, most people didn't even try. And I, in fact, I had subject matter experts from the military and uh, aviation that were calling me up immediately and surveyors, you name it. I've got a great list on my on my channel. They start calling me and saying, "Hey, you're not nuts. Here's why." And we're going to add to it. And people just kept tacking on and tacking on and tacking on. I was waiting for just even a single academic to to contact me. Of course, they wouldn't because it's beneath them. And after six months, it was like, wow, that's it. It's the, there's nothing I could I couldn't go back now if I tried. Uh, and then you know, fast forward nine years, and uh, once once I started to see the game, how it's played, and and the space program and NASA and how the Americans fooled everybody, which was great. It was brilliant. It was a great plan and their timing was good and, and it, and it worked for a long time, but now it's getting long in the tooth and now they don't know what to do. And so, which is why the Artemis program is just in shambles. And they, and again, I, I'll give you a quick line. I was talking to a academic um, girl out in Ireland and, and I asked her, I, I go, I go, so you, you believe the Americans, you know, went to the moon, right? And she goes, yes, yes. And I go, you know, they haven't gone back since 1972, haven't even tried. In fact, no one's tried. So when are we going back? And she looks at me with just these glossy, hopeful eyes. And she goes, soon, we're going back soon. And I go, yeah, sorry. I'm old enough to remember every president since freaking Reagan has said that. Every president since Reagan has said the same thing. It's like, oh, we're committed to going back. Yeah, we've had a lot of presidents since then. Nope. 
Nope, nothing. Absolutely nothing. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad that's brought up. Cause so, like, uh, NASA is planning, you know, I think it's called the Artemis uh, program or whatever. It's the next mission to the moon. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that? Or what does the community kind of think of that? Oh, my God. It's, 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 a, it's a freaking joke. Or... It's, it's an absolute joke. Artemis 1... I remember very specific. I mean, we watch everything in real time. I mean, we're we're so hungry still that any time NASA does anything or SpaceX or um, Blue Horizon or um, what was the other one? Virgin Galactic. We watch all those guys. And when Artemis and I, I called it, we can predict stuff even before it happens. It's like, oh, yeah, when they get to the moon, you know, like Artemis was going to do a flyby, right? The, the res, they're going to crank down the resolution, make it so freaking grainy that um, that no one's going to be able to identify anything. And we were taking better shots of the moon from here, right? If you believe in the 240,000 miles, just round it up, 240,000 miles away. We're getting better images from here. They've got a capsule that's 50 miles away from the moon. And we can't even tell if what kind of craters there are from there. Not to mention, there's never stars, by the way, in space. But that's, by the way, stuns me. Which is like, okay, so there's no stars in the Apollo missions. You can blame it on exposure settings all day long, right? It's like, well, it was a, it was a camera exposure setting. It's like, really, all the rules of film. You didn't want to change exposure settings ever. But now there's no film anymore. It's all digital. I mean, we've got cameras of the gods now. We can crank any level of resolution and any contrast we can do it we can do thermal anything you want no stars in space ever well that's weird because i can walk outside there's stars all day long but apparently when you're flying around the moon even though it should be absolutely beautiful especially when you get on the dark side there's no stars so no artemis is and and i knew i said look artemis one is going to be a disaster artemis two is going to be kicked down the road and they did they kicked it down immediately they, they not to, not even 2024, 25, 2020, 26. That's when we're thinking about doing Artemis 2. It's like, oh, here's the crew that we're going to use. Really? Really? You're going to tell us in, in 26 that you're, you're, you're actually going to use the same crew? No. No. I've, I've heard this. I've, I've heard the story. I've, I've heard the cry wolf thing. And SpaceX, same sort of thing. Remember, Elon Musk, back before he was apparently the most influential tech science guy, Tony Stark wannabe in the world, he, I remember 2017 when he said, oh, yeah, I'm going to send two people around, or um, um, uh, a crew around the moon, do a flyby in 2018, middle of 2018. I'm going, and I knew at that point, I, I knew timetables. It's like, wait a minute, that's not even 18 months from now. You don't even have a rocket. And and you're you're making this claim? Never, never happened. It's 2024. Never happened. But then again, every promise he's ever made, sorry, the, the guy is a freaking puppet for for big state, deep state, whatever you want to call it. So. There you go. It's my little ramble. Um, so I, I did a little bit of research on it. Not, not That's all right. No, no, uh, That's all right. No I mean, you had to have d done a little okay. research if you called me. So, um, so you worked as a software developer in a uh, boy. I did. I did. I was, um, it was weird. Yeah. In Colorado of all things. Um, I was, I initially started out playing video games for a living. I parlayed a video game, a computer pinball championship back in, um, 94 into a gig where I was, I was brought in as a ringer, uh, in 95 for a software company out in Boulder called Starplay. It's gone now. Uh, but this was back, you know, when, when there were not that many of us. I mean, I knew the, I knew the guys from Bungie long before they made Halo. That will give you an example. Um, and then I would go to conferences like E3 and um, Macworld Vegas. Or I'm sorry, Macworld Boston, Macworld San Fran and stuff like that. And then I ended up becoming a, a video game producer for a little while and recruited stuff for, for the company. And then uh, they got into an arbitration issue with one of their developers out of Tokyo. And the whole thing just kind of imploded after that. And I segued over and did, um, I did software training for time and attendance companies for basically 20 years before I left Boulder. So I was in Boulder from 95 until 2015. I wrote the clues in Boulder and then um, left and went to Seattle once everything took off. And is that what you do? Are you to work uh, a full time? I'm sorry, say it one more time. You do uh, an out full time? You just work a kind of flat earth uh, content creation type stuff? 
when sorry the so at, you mean after i after i left after i stopped software what was i doing yeah i am just make as far as professions and uh, oh oh no i did I, did I started doing this full time so um I, it was just it was boulder was a wonderful company i mean let's put it this way the the tech startups in colorado especially in boulder were amazing in the mid 90s all the way you know for at least 10 15 years and then the the uh, the real estate market crash. I know you're probably too young to remember back in 2008. Oh my God, just devastated everything. And all the startup companies crashed. So I, I still had some money from real estate stuff that, uh, that I'd saved up. So I was kind of floating around. So I had, again, not only did I have free time, I had tons of free time. But once I got into Flat Earth, there was a producer out of New York that told me, it's like, yeah, you got to, it's like, you know, put your stuff in a storage, whatever, you know, you're going to be traveling quite a bit for this. So be mobile. And so I called my family. I said, hey, <laughs> I need a I need a base of operations while I'm doing this, and uh, and it worked out really really well. But yeah, I'm I'm one of the few people that got to do flat Earth full time, uh, just because I had the luxury of doing so. If I had been married or had kids or young kids or anything like that, I probably it would have been way way tougher to do. Um, but because I was in I was in this wonderful zone where I could say yes to everything, I did. So any anybody that wanted me to, to do stuff, it's like, oh, yeah, I want to fly out and do, do this, fly out and do that, uh, talk to whoever I want. Uh, there was there was, the only thing limiting me was hours in the day. So, yeah, it worked out. <clears throat> uh, I guess do you have any flyer music that you would recommend because uh, I want to, you know, show some of the class, you know, different aspects of flyer culture. Do you have any uh, good artists that you uh, would recommend? Oh yeah! Oh God! Um, there's a wonderful. Um, hang on, let me go to YouTube. Let's see if, if it's still called this. Um, it's called Conspiracy Music Guru. Music Guru, and he is an English guy out of yeah, Conspiracy Music Guru. Um, <laughs> yeah, seventy six thousand subs. Pretty good. The um. He's on YouTube and he made he's he's done stuff for us at different conferences and made some wonderful you know full album uh, multiple albums actually of, of great conspiracies. He's the guy I would focus on first when it came to music. I've got I've actually got a playlist on my channel with tons of different music on there from people that was really because Flat Earth is really creative forward thinking. We didn't even have to ask. People just started making flat Earth, you know, tunes. They were inspired so much. But he was definitely first and foremost the guy, conspiracy mu music guru. And 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 the videos. And you know, again, it's not just song. He makes videos for. He made videos for everything, and they're good. They're funny stuff. Most of it's just ripping apart the the U.S. Um, uh, space program, but it's good stuff. Awesome. Yeah, look at that. That looks uh, a lot of content here. Yeah. Yeah, go go. Well, I mean, it depends what you want to go for. I mean, there's country stuff, there's rock stuff. Uh, depend for your class, I probably wouldn't do the the generic or you know the 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 heavy conspiracy anti shot stuff. You know, just just because it, you know probably wouldn't fly in your class. But uh, the flatter stuff is is awesome. I thought. I had this written down. I totally forgot to ask it earlier. Um, but how intrinsic do you think like religious and spiritual i remember you mentioned like all the religions earlier how you have you know different members from different faiths but how uh closely tied is that to like kind of the flat earth centric thing because i've seen a lot of people on forum and stuff talk about how the bible reinforces um you know yep. their, their flat earth worldview and how it's just kind of proven itself so how close is that you know, oh it's it's huge Abs absolutely huge i'll give you a quick story um at the first big conference we did in 2017 afterwards when we were doing the you know the the census of what what people thought afterwards and it was almost 50-50, which was 50% thought it was too Christian. The other 50% thought it wasn't Christian enough. And so the, the very next conference that we did, uh, we, we were splitting it up where, you know, there were different stages. You know, one was religious-based. But yeah, at least 50% of our, our membership are hardcore Christians, at least. Um, and that's just because, you know, the Bible, you know, Genesis... A lot of people focus on Genesis. You know, the firmament separates the waters above and the waters below. And in fact, there's a there's a great dedicated website out there called testingtheglobe.com, which you know the one of our late members, Rob Skiba, he came out and and went through the Bible with a five tooth comb, and he called me up almost immediately and said, you know what, it's a flat Earth book. 
He goes, there's only one verse that even hints at a, at, at a circle, which is he who sitteth upon the, uh, the circle of the earth, Isaiah 40, 22. He goes, the rest of it, totally flat. And yeah, I, I get that. Absolutely, absolutely understand. So yeah, big religious group uh, in, in it. Uh, it's, so it's an interesting mix. You know, there's a lot of free thinkers, but there's also quite a few conservative people <laughs> that show up at conferences. Um, is there any uh, slider things coming up in Denver? I live in the, I live over here. I'd love to uh, check you guys out in person and uh, maybe get some different interviews. Um, is there any other conferences coming up? D- well, there are the, you know, there's a, there's an app. You really should look at the app first. By the way, that's something you should you, you could show to your your class, um, which is the uh, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. You could also look that up on on YouTube if you wanted. Uh, I think it's what two ninety nine, and it is. It, I didn't build it. Uh, one of our guys in the East Coast built it. And it's got a thing on there where it's got a friend finder where you can look for blue dots, which is anybody that's registered on the app that in your area. And you'll be amazed. Colorado is huge. As far as content creators that you could meet on short notice, uh, I don't know. You'd have to look at the app to find out who, because you'd have to you know, do a blast and say, hey, anybody out there want to talk to me? I'm, I'm flat curious or whatever you want to say. And people, people will respond. Um, the last Denver meetup, I can't remember the, I mean, I've gone to, to Colorado for a number of meetups since then. Um, but I don't have any on the docket right this second, but I guarantee you, know, again, look at the app. You'd be amazed how many people are in Colorado. It's, it's thick in Colorado. At one point, as a matter of fact, I was living in Colorado. Um, uh, uh, Bob from Globebusters was in Colorado. ODD was in Colorado. Uh, and the three, the three of us that were in the, uh, the, the documentary on Netflix were, were all there. So yeah, Colorado, big presence. Um, you know, I am, uh, hold on. What is this? 30, 40 minutes now? Yeah, I appreciate your time, but don't really, uh, I, Oh no 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 big deal. I mean, you're you're gonna have to stay up all night just to try to process this and get in t- into a thing. We'll do this if you get a chance. Uh, I'll hang up with you and email me. You know, wherever you got my phone number, you probably got my email address. Email me and I will shoot you the audio file of this. And if you need anything else specifically, let me know. But uh, you, you've got you got more than enough for the class. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I um, already have most of the essay written. I uh, just, you know, now that I have some quotes from you and some uh, some testimony and everything, it's going to fluff it up a bit and make it, uh, make it good. So. Cool. But, um, yeah, I, I really, really appreciate that. Seriously, on short notice, I just... Um, oh, no. Hap- hap- look for one of you for a friend. Happy to do it. I, I, so. any, anytime anybody from a school messages me, it's like, oh, no, I got to get a hold of them. So, it's cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm also minoring in... Um, journalism and uh, media production so i uh, plan to make you know short documentary films in the future so um, oh awesome definitely a sub here within i can uh, definitely look into that. i feel like in a documentary too i i saw you um reference in that too so yeah yeah if well if you, if you get a chance watch it watch it i mean our community hates hates the documentary because well you know it's fair <laughs> and balanced uh but it's but it's i thought it was well done so awesome. yeah and uh just be clear too uh this is a cultural anthropology class is not any way physics related or like oh no no nope, so, uh, nope, i get it i get it i get it enough. it's cool I'm look I've, I've done psychology know. classes i've done sociology classes no no you're you're totally fine gotcha yeah i just uh, want to reaffirm i'm not gonna hate you guys in a negative light here it's just kind of hey, hang on more of a brief reason. analysis more. hang on one second hey can i call you right back crap all right i gotta call her anyway um Anything else you need from me? Um, I don't think so, man. I really, really appreciate it. Yep, and, yep. Um, e- yeah, yeah. Email me, and I'll get you the audio file if you're if you're if you need it. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I'll, I'll do that right now. All right. Hey, you have a good evening. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. You too. Bye.